Good morning. Um, another lesson from Matthew chapter 25. Oh, I'm sorry, Ma Matthew 5, not 25. Matthew 5, uh, verses 27 and 28 of what Jesus said about adultery. Uh, before we get into this, uh, let's uh, get the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time to look into your word. We pray, Lord, for those that may not know you as their Savior. We pray for your word to touch their heart. We pray for your spirit to draw them. Your mercy be upon them, Lord. Um, please uh, guide and direct each and every one of us in the study and help us each and every one to uh, learn from your word, to be able to take your word and to witness for you as, as we should in, in our everyday walk of life. Lord, again, we lift you up as our friend and Savior, our King of kings, our Lord of lords. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Only your will be done, Lord. Amen. Um, a little late getting this posted. Um, I uh, wanted to get this done last week. Uh, I, I want to get back kind of on Fridays, but doing this on Fridays all the time. But um, last week we had a pretty busy week, kind of unique. Um, let's just had a doctor appointment, and uh, then uh, I, I worked late. Uh, worked to three three in the morning, uh, two days in a row there, Monday and Tuesday, and. Um, did that so I could get off Wednesday because uh, Wednesday my granddaughter Marley Jane was Abner was going to be uh, baptized. Um, her and uh, two other young ladies, one was uh, in her uh, late teens, and the other little girl was uh, just a little older than Marley. So um, my, my boss let me uh, work that way and make up the time and and uh, take off early Wednesday. So I I got to go to that. So that was a real big blessing there. We had a really good time. Uh, she's baptized in uh, and the other girls too in uh, uh, Aaron and Dusty's swimming pool. And um, I, just a few weeks ago, we had um, a young man get baptized, uh, not there, but in, in a uh, creek out at Kelly's Bridge there. But uh, that was a good time also. So uh, we've had, had some really nice times here at church. And... Uh, thankful for that uh, got home from the baptizing though and then I found out uh, the air conditioning had broke down <laughs> so it was pretty hot so I got to go to Walmart and got a couple of uh, small window units actually caught them on sale and so I got a pretty decent deal on them so I got a backup now and so um, the uh, guy that installed our system was on a vacation and wasn't back till today till Monday today actually well i guess today's officially tuesday but anyway monday uh the 17th when he was back in town so we were okay so we you know we just told him you know we could wait a little bit if he had someone that did you know need it worse than we did so th those units are doing good i'm very thankful for that i mean you know that that's a big blessing so we, we at least we got back up air now <laughs> got back up heat but now i got back up air so those those units are doing good, and I'm, I'm glad to, glad to come home and be cool after being a, in the heat at work uh, through, through my work day. Uh, but so so we had kind of a, a rough little week there, but uh, a good week. In fact, I got to see see the kids baptized, all of them, and, and of course my little little granddaughter. That was a, a special thing there. But um, I take a lot of pictures, so. But anyway, uh, thankful to get to, to look at this tonight, and uh, this will be probably sort of a short, just a couple of verses here, but um, I, I had a, a little bit of a, a challenge there, kind of thinking, well, where should I leave off on this? But I just want to do these two verses tonight. Um, let's look at this um, verse 27 out of Matthew chapter 5. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Referring back to the law. And uh, Exodus 20 and verse 14. As a matter of fact, we were in Exodus uh, 20 uh, at church. That was our Sunday school lesson last week. Um, and we didn't certainly didn't get through all Exodus 20 either. But... Um, had some inter interesting discussion during the class, so that was good. But Exodus 20 and verse 14 says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, if you look in Leviticus 20, 
20 and verse 10, um, it tells us that adultery back then in under the law was punishable by death. Deuteronomy chapter 22, if you look into that, it gives more details on how to handle that uh, adultery. And uh, God took uh, adultery seriously, as we can see. It's punishable by death in the Old Testament there. And um, we know when the lady was brought before Christ, uh, taken in the act of adultery, it's, it's odd that, you know, uh, under the law, if two people were caught in adultery and, you know, and it's, they are consensually in adultery, then uh, both were put to death. But when they brought this lady to Christ, they didn't bring the man. They, she was caught in the act of adultery, so... If they caught them both, how did the man escape? Did he, he a pretty good runner or something? You know what was? You know, I think it was a setup, and that's just um, just reading between the lines in the context. It sounds to me like the lady was set up, and uh, of course you know that story. Uh, Christ told him he he just shut him down. Uh, he he was out without sin. Let him cast the first stone, and they all just left. You know, uh, you knew, your mind could imagine you know what their guilt was, but um, the, they, none of them could accuse this lady without sin. And they all just turned around and left. You know, Christ constantly just shut these guys down. Um, but it was serious, and, and there's a reason why. Um, you know, marriage is an uh, example of God's relationship you know, to the church. The, the church is the bride of Christ. And um, God told the Israelites, you know, I'm a jealous God. And um, most people, and I know there's exceptions to this, there's some people out there that do some, some weird stuff, but um, most people do not want to share their spouse with someone else. Uh, and I'm old school. I believe um, a man should marry a woman and a woman should marry a man. Um, I'm I'm not into the same sex marriage stuff. So uh, your your spouse is someone of the opposite sex, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that's the only legitimate marriage. I think it's what God ordained, and I think that's uh, that's the way it is. Now, they can pass law or the laws they want, but that doesn't change the word of God. Um, so God used this relationship to show us. Um, how his relationship works with us, how he feels. Uh, spiritual adultery is something that the, the Israelites committed. It's when they started worshiping idols. They, you know, God's not going to share um, his place with a false deity. And uh, you know, and what's behind these these deities was uh, demons. Um, a good. Uh, you can get on YouTube and look at uh, Jonathan Kahn, uh, Return of the Gods, and uh, I'm reading the book right now, and, and it explains a lot of this, and uh, uh, I didn't realize how that uh, the a lot of what's going on today was going on in, in the worship of these ancient gods. Um, but that's a whole other topic, but that spiritual adultery, that's something that uh, God... Uh, had put up with with the Israelites in in the walk with them and uh, leading them out of Egypt and how they wanted to return back to the, the Egypt and there was all the false gods back in Egypt and they thought they was better off back in Egypt. Uh, whole and getting back into the Sunday school lesson we're at in Exodus, but um, Hebrews thirteen verse uh, four says marriage is honorable in all. And a bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So God is going to take care of, of people who are committing adultery. They're not going to get by with it. Um, God takes marriage serious. But you know, uh, Hollywood has made uh, a mockery of marriage. It's, um, it's made it out to be something like you can just take off and put on like a, you would a hat, you know, it's, it's just okay. You know, you get married and I don't know, maybe they look at it as a publicity stunt. Um, they think, well, you know, I get married. If it doesn't work out, I can just uh, get divorced and, and go on. But there's, uh, you know, 
later on in this chapter, Christ talks about divorce. And um, that's a serious thing. Also, marriage is a very serious thing with God. It represents Christ and a church. Uh, the church is the bride of Christ. So uh, it's a serious thing. It's something that God gave us, and uh, it's, it's not to be taken lightly. Um, I, I think it would be good if, if all young folks, before they get married, could sit down with someone and all the, the seriousness of this be explained to them before they jump into something. You know, Hollywood has glamorized uh, adultery, divorce, sexual sins of different types, and especially as it's elaborated now into the these same-sex uh, agenda. Um, and you know what? Children, if they're not taught any any different, they grow up watching these shows, and they they don't know that that's wrong. They think that's the normal thing to do because they've never been taught anything different. You know, when Paul went into Corinth and places like that, Athens, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Ephesus, you know, where there was sexual immorality, and um, then these people had to, to realize uh, as they come to Christ that they need to lead, lead a different life now. Um, a lot of the sexual immorality you see now was going on back then in the idol worship. So children need to be taught the right way. And, um, and Christ, uh, when he's talking about uh, adultery here, he says, you know, you've heard that it's been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. They knew the law. They knew what the law said. They'd heard that. And, but he goes to the heart of the matter. And uh, the heart of the matter is the heart. <laughs> and in the next verse, let's read verse 28. And he, he gets it down to the old saying, um, where the rubber meets the road. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So let's, let's look back at Proverbs 6. Christ is saying, you know, you've already got her in your heart. And you've looked upon her to lust after her, and you committed adultery. So let's look back at Proverbs 6, and we'll read verses 16 through 19. <clears throat> kind of get the, the context of it, so don't just jump right in. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, now listen to this one. A heart that deviseth, deviseth, it's hard to say, wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Uh, the one I want to concentrate on here specifically is a heart that devises wicked imaginations. Uh, now that could be, wicked imaginations could be a lot of things, of course, but I think lust would uh, fall in that uh, because the man is looking at a woman to lust after he's I would have immoral imaginations about that woman he let your mind go to wherever you, you want but uh, you understand what I'm saying here without getting uh, real descriptive descriptive um, but that can lead to sexual immorality in the, in the physical sense not just in the imagination of his heart devising wicked imaginations and then that may lead feet that be swift running to mischief that might lead to physical adultery um, the lust that he's had uh, for that woman so um, in, in our society um, the um, the old saying, sex sells, and uh, sexual temptations are all around us. Um, TV has a lot of it, advertisements of all sorts. Uh, they're just out there everywhere you, you go. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so, um, 
you, you know, let me give the, let me give this example. Um, I've used this before and I've used the church and, uh, like, um, when someone wants to advertise something, sell something, they want to get your attention. Um, a lot of times if it's a product that's probably going to be uh, something that uh, going to appeal to a man they'll uh, have a, a pretty girl advertise, advertising it um, well maybe for a woman they might have a handsome man of some sort uh, advertising but uh, since we're since we're talking about men here I'll use the, the man example um, you know you, you may see a tool or a piece of equipment, machinery or whatever, or um, some type of product you would, would use in an industrial application, and uh, you may be looking through a, a magazine or something, and um, here's a pretty girl. She's advertising that. Well, what does she have to do with the, the tools or the equipment or machinery or product, whatever it is, say it's cutting fluid or whatever, since, uh, you know, since I work in a machine shop, but... Um, they, whatever it is that they're advertising, um, they got this this girl, and I I said you know they they really should pay those girls more because they can't afford very many clothes to wear. They usually don't have very many clothes on, but why is why are they doing that? I'm just making a joke out of that, but um, why are they doing that? They they're doing that so that that will catch your eye, and most of us men, if we're honest. Uh, the pretty girl is going to catch her eye. We're going to stop and look at that. And uh, if you're not careful, you can look lustfully. So um, that's that's out there. And all these temptations are out there all over the place. And, uh, you know, TV commercials. Um, I remember there was a... Uh, this been years ago, and I can't even remember what... Um, what company put this out but um, they were advertising some kind of beer and I can't remember what it was now but anyway um, they is something about those the Swedish bikini team shows up and you know the the pretty girls the, and they're, they're letting on like um, you know this is it, it's all a, a great time you're gonna have a great time with this this beer this alcoholic beverage um, so they're not showing the the downside of that, obviously, but there we go. The the advertisement with the pretty girls catch your attention. Um, so we can't do nothing about um, what they put in the advertisements and on billboards and magazines and whatever or the TV shows. Um, uh, you know, like I've said numerous times, Tish and I don't watch much TV during the day. It's it's never on, and we just don't turn it on. But uh, she watch, like she likes to watch Dick Van Dyke now, and, and real late at night it comes on. We just got a regular antenna, digital antenna, no cable and all that, satellite or nothing, um, because it got so bad that you know you just there's just stuff on there you don't want to watch, and. Uh, you're better off not to fill your mind with that junk. But my point is, what do we do when we're bombarded with all these temptations? They're out there. You can't stop it. Um, you know, you you might um, complain against it and, and things like that. But it's it's there, and it's probably going to be there. We're not going to get rid of all of it. So you're going to have to deal with it in in, in some way. So. Um, so what do we do about it? Uh, Proverbs gives us some more advice. You know, you you guard your heart. And uh, I want to read uh, verses twenty through twenty nine out of Proverbs six. It gives us some some good advice. It says, "My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother." Now. Um, I know sometimes uh, someone may have a father or mother that maybe don't or are not godly and maybe don't give godly advice, but I think the the context here is talking about someone who's going to give you godly advice um, <clears throat> based on God's word. It says, bind them continually upon thine heart. Now Christ is saying, you know, if you lust after the woman, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. He's saying, Bind these commandments 
on your heart and tie them about thy neck. You know, keep them close to you where you have access to this. You know, bind them on your heart. It's in your heart. You're not letting something in your heart that shouldn't be there. You know, the lust for that woman in your heart shouldn't be there. You've, you've replaced that with something good, with God's commandments. And here's what it's going to do for you. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. You know, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. You know, uh, God doesn't slumber or sleep. Um, so we don't have to worry about, you know, God taking care of us while we're asleep. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And you know, when you, when you walk the right way, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. And you've went the way God's word leads you. It's going to be a lot easier if you lay down and sleep. And he says here, it will keep you when you, uh, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. So we don't have to lay down and worry. Uh, you know, God's word is, is going to be fulfilled regardless of whether we're asleep. God's not sleeping. He doesn't slumber or sleep. Um, and it says when we wake, it, it shall talk with thee so it's going to be there to guide you to let you know what you need to do when you when you wake back up it's going to lead you and you can lay down and have a good night's rest when you wake up it's going to be there to lead you it's going to talk to you for the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs of his instruction are the way of life you know god's word uh it gives you reproof. I mean, there's times when you read God's word and, it, you know, it hits home. Uh, if you don't, you're living an awfully good life. Uh, but, you know, you, you remember the, the psalm where it's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I always say, um, I always use this um, explanation that it's a lamp unto my feet. It shows me where I'm standing. If I'm not standing where I need to be, it's a light into my path. It shows me the way to go, just like in here. When when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and reproofs and instruction are the are the way of life. You know, we need instruction. We need reproof. <clears throat> to keep thee, now listen to this, to keep thee from the evil woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Uh, you may be enticed to go after this lady. And she's enticing you. Um, she, she's called an evil woman. Now we, we know there are some evil women in the Bible. Um, one good example was Delilah. Who uh, led Samson astray. Uh, he was taken in by her. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. So, so there are women out there that will try to drag you into adultery. We know there's prostitution out there. We know that there are... Um, women that, that are evil also. But now, remember, Christ is saying to lust after a woman. He didn't say just an evil woman. You've committed adultery with her in your heart. But um, regardless of whether she is a prostitute trying to seduce you or whether she's just a pretty girl or, or whatever, or someone that, that suits your fancy, you, you it's maybe, maybe someone else's wife. You're not to look upon her with lust. You know, Christ is not condoning any of that. But here it's, it's telling you that in Proverbs, it's going to keep you from that woman that is an evil woman who may be trying to seduce you, to, to drag you into prostitution with her. So she's, she's wanting to make money off of you. Now, listen to what it says here. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Well, you know, you think about that. That's, <laughs> absolutely not. You know, um, like I say, I work in a shop, and when I 
have one of those hot metal chips get down my shirt uh, it burns uh, and yeah you know, you're, you're getting ready to take that shirt off you're you're just pulling around on it and you're trying to get that little little critter out they're not very big a lot of times but um there's just not room for it and you both in that shirt because it's hot it's really hot you know several hundred degrees um at, at times and um I forget just one metal turns blue, but you know, if one of them blue ones gets down your neck, they really hurt. You know, they lose, you know, I've got a few little scars there and stuff with them. Little critters that got me. So can you take fire in your bosom and his clothes not be burnt? You know, sometimes those chips will hit your clothes and burn your clothes. <clears throat> so can one go up on up on hot coals and his feet not be burnt? Well, uh, Certainly, the, both those things are going to hurt you. Um, here's what he says now. So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. So uh, you can't, you're messing around with fire when you do that. Um, you're not to lust after your neighbor's wife or, or any woman as far as that if it's not your wife then you shouldn't be you shouldn't be looking at her with um, devising uh, evil thoughts uh, impure thoughts uh, so, so that is what Christ said about adultery and you know people might uh, think well you know it's just it's just a physical act but Christ brought it down to what is in your heart uh, if you're if you're lusting, then you have committed adultery. So um, that's where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? Uh, you know, we we sometimes want to cut ourselves some slack. Uh, there's an old I remember it was, I don't know who the comedian was, but they um, I guess he was looking at a girl and. Uh, He's married, and he said, well, just because I'm on a diet don't mean I can't look at the menu. But Christ is saying, no, you can't look at the menu. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to guard our hearts. Uh, this, the Word of God will guard our heart. As a matter of fact, uh, in Psalms 119.9, um, looking at the wrong page. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereunto according to thy word? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good words in that 119th Psalm. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the sexual temptation is out there. You're not going to avoid it, but it's what you let in your heart. Uh, you keep your heart full of God's word. There's not room for other things in there. Um, the the first thing, uh, as I always uh, try to close out with, is you got to know Christ as your Savior to start with. Uh, you can go try to uh, turn over a new leaf. And like one preacher said, uh, I turned over the leaf and found out the other side was just as bad as the, 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 the other side. So both leaves were, sides of the leaves were bad. Uh, didn't do any good to turn over a leaf. Um, it, it doesn't, um, as far as salvation is concerned, I mean, turn over a new leaf trying to do do the right thing is a good thing, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to save you. Just like you can start trying to um, not look at a woman lustfully as, as Christ said in Matthew 5. Uh, you can try to not be angry at your brother without a cause. Uh, you can do all these these things that the law is pointing us to, but uh, the only the way you can be saved is through putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Because as hard as you can try to keep all these commandments, you will never do it. Um, the only one person who fulfilled the law, and that was Jesus Christ. And uh, because of what he did you can have his righteousness imputed to your account. Uh, that's how each and every one of us got saved, is by putting our faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ to pay for my sins. And that's the way I did it, and the way everyone else does it that is, is saved. Uh, it's an easy thing. And uh, like I say, the, 
There's two little girls, um, Marley's six, and the other little girl's just a little bit older. Uh, the other young lady was um, late teens, and um, the young man, he was, um, I don't know if he's quite a teenager yet or not, but he's a little older than Marley and the other little girl, so uh, all ages there. And then we had a lady that was in her early 90s got saved, so uh, it's easy. Anyone, any age can do it. Um, as soon as you come to that a, um, age of accountability where you understand you need Christ and there's no one too good that they don't need him and there's no one too bad that he can't save them. So if you put your faith and trust in him, let us know at the church and uh, we'll be glad to hear that. Y'all uh, have a good day and uh, maybe we'll get our air conditioner fixed here pretty soon. Uh, thank everyone for watching too. Thank you very much.